Welcome to the MetPro Method Podcast. I am your host, Crystal O'Keefe. Today, I am joined by co-host of the Marathon Training Academy Podcast, Angie Spencer. And we will be discussing Angie's MetPro journey as well as her love of marathons. Thank you so much for joining me today, Angie. Thank you so much for having me, Crystal. It's a real honor to be on the podcast. Oh, well, we are honored to have you. Uh, Angie, I know you you obviously have a podcast all about running, but how long have you yourself been a runner? Well, I started dabbling in running when I was a teenager. Of course, as a teenage girl, I thought that I needed to lose weight. And so running seemed like the fastest method to get there. And, but, you know, I really wasn't doing it for a very, um, deep reason or something that would keep me going. So, you know, I kind of dabbled in and out of it in my early twenties as I was finishing up college and working and starting a family and things like that. But I didn't really get serious into distance running until my late twenties and ran my first marathon at age 28 and really have never looked back since then. (laughs) Wow. So when, when you decided, okay, I love this distance, what was it about the, the marathon long distance or just longer distance in general that appealed to you versus shorter distances? That's a great question. Um, because there are a huge variety of distances, obviously probably the 5k distance is the most popular around the world. It's very accessible, but I think with the marathon, it was, it was like a puzzle that I'm still trying to figure out honestly. Um, and I loved it because it was hard. It it was not something just that any everyone was doing. And it really required me to dig deep, both physically, mentally, emotionally, even spiritually. Um, and so because it demanded a lot of me, I feel like it has given back a lot to me as well. So I don't know, that's that's kind of my very fuzzy answer on it. <laughs> wow. Well, how, how many marathons have you run since you started running marathons when you were 28? <laughs> I have done 62 marathons and six <laughs> ultra marathons. So, <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't even calculate how many miles that is, but how many, okay. So when you say ultra marathon, there's obviously different distances for ultras also. So like what distance have those been? I have done three 50 Ks, which is 31.1 miles for those of us who do miles. Um, I've done one 40 miler and two 50 milers. Wow. I mean, that's an incredible amount of, of running. And I was reading on your uh, website that you've also done a marathon in every single state, every single. That's right. Yeah. I kind of started my journey, you know, running marathons. And then I started meeting people who were just doing it amazing things um, with the marathon distance. And I met people who were doing a marathon in every single state. And I kind of adopted that as a goal for myself, because my husband and I both love to travel. And there's just something special about getting to run in an area, you just see it in a different light than you do in a vehicle. (laughs) That's Um, true. And, you know, we went to some really unusual places that we probably wouldn't have gone to otherwise. And so it was just a really special way to you know, celebrate the diversity of the United States and, you know, be able to kind of balance running and travel at the same time. (laughs) I love that. What do you have a favorite state that you went to? Well, my home state is Montana. Um, I haven't lived there in many years, but I was born and raised there. So I think that's probably the state that's closest to my heart. But uh, we got to go to Alaska, which is just an amazing state. I still feel like I really haven't um, explored it very thoroughly. Um, That was an amazing one. Of course, Hawaii was was pretty special as well. And I saved Hawaii for my 50th state. And did it in January of 2020. So it was like right before the pandemic lockdown. So I really feel blessed that I was able to finish that 50 state journey right before, you know, basically the whole world kind of shut down for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I bet if I bet it felt like you got an extra little boost of travel in before. (laughs) 100%. Yes. (laughs) I can't even imagine like between the travel, the running itself and the training for the travel. I mean, how do you have time to do anything else? <laughs> well, honestly, I pre- I live a pretty boring life. You know, I'm like not one of those people who has nightlife. It's like get up super early, um, you know, get the kids off to school, do a workout. Um, I work from home, which it makes it really um, convenient. So I have, you know, more of a flexible schedule, which not everyone has. And so, you know, I can kind of fit my workouts in between the projects that I need to get done. And yeah, I mean, I'm in bed by nine o'clock every night. So (laughs) 
Me too, but I don't yeah. run a marathon all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, you, you can't have it all at once, but if you prioritize things, you know, and balance socialization and sleep and your running and strength training and, you know, just family, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it does work out. And I, you know, I'm very blessed to have a supportive family. So that, that really has helped um, with this journey. <laughs> I get, I guess it helps that they get to enjoy the travel aspect of it too. Even if they're not running, they get to cheer you on and they get to see amazing places they wouldn't have seen otherwise. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly. And you know, kids, they don't thoroughly appreciate it. Sometimes there's a lot of complaining and, but um, as they get older, they definitely have appreciated it more. And, you know, I think they'll look back with fond memories of their childhood and the places they were able to go. <laughs> I, I think that's true. I think that's true. I, how, how old are your kids, if I may ask? Yeah, my oldest is 17. And then I have a 15 year old and an 11 year old, all boys. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of boys to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> We've got we've got a 21, uh, 21 year old, 17 year old living in the house still and a 15 year old living in the house still. And uh, oh, nice. The 15 year old's a girl. So that adds a whole another aspect into things. And uh, yeah, I feel like they're getting more appreciative as they get older, but they still have that teenage aspect of like, whatever. They're not impressed by anything, you know? Yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> your parents are not cool. It's just exactly. bottom line, not cool. So I stopped trying there. <laughs> <laughs> now, how you mentioned strength training, how do you balance in strength training with marathon training? I mean, there's just a lot of running involved. So where, where do you find time? How does that work? Well, I often do two workouts a day um, and I do most of my workouts in the morning. So I schedule my workouts pretty, you know, I put them on the calendar. So I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I tend to do like heavier, lower body strength days early in the week so that I'm still not sore for when my long run comes around later in the week. Um, and you know, then I'll, I can do like heavier up, upper body closer to my long run and things like that. So, you know, it is a bit of, you know, you kind of have to schedule it in and be intentional about it, but it's very doable. And I am just such a huge advocate of strength training for runners because, you know, running is a sport where a lot of people get injured and it's often because we only want to run and we don't add in a lot of those accessory training and balance out and have overall strength. And so as I get older, I especially realize this even more and working with a lot of coaching clients and, you know, people that listen to the podcast. So I I do beat the strength training drum a lot. <laughs> People probably get sick of it. <laughs> No, that's great. I, I think I, I love that you are stressing that to people because it is so important. I mean, I've read on multiple occasions, if there's one thing that you can do to keep yourself mobile and young as long as possible, it's strength training. And I think women especially tend to kind of toss that over to the side because we don't, we think we don't want to lift heavy. We don't want to get bulky. I mean, you've heard all the things, so. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. I, you know, it's essential, especially for women as they get into their late 30s and beyond to be lifting heavy, to be prioritizing high intensity interval training, to keep those bones strong, um, and to be actively fighting against the muscle loss that happens. And that just carries over into a better experience with perimenopause and beyond. Um, also, you know, with a person's body composition goals, it's just essential. So yeah, MetPro has been really wonderful in that because I feel like they really emphasize the importance of strength training along a person's journey. And I love the workouts in the app. Um, the wampus rompers are my favorite because I'm like a lower body person. So <laughs> Yeah, they're and they're so they're so great. I was just recommending that to somebody just the other day. And and the the wampus rompers, I love just saying it first of all. Yeah. <laughs> wampus rompers. That's just fun. Um, but but second of all, I mean there's there's a lot of really good moves in there that all work together really well. Uh that's my favorite. Um so so when what was running like prior to MetPro versus after you started MetPro? That's a great question. I had maybe a decade of doing marathons, everything was going great. Um, you know, I had qualified for Boston, was able to run the Boston marathon, was achieving a lot of my goals. And then I started dealing with hormonal imbalance. Oh. And as a result of that, I gained like 40 pounds, even though I was keeping up with my running and my normal exercise schedule and trying the best that I knew how to eat a healthy balanced diet. And still I just, had this hormonal imbalance, which I hear is very common as women get into their late thirties. 
Um, so I worked with my doctor. It was a long process of getting things rebalanced, but even after I was back at a normal hormonal balance, I was stuck with about 35 pounds of unwanted fat. And, you know, for anyone who has struggled with their weight through the years, it's just really hard to run when you're carrying extra weight. And it's really hard to feel good about yourself and to have the energy that you want to show up with in the world and things like that. So I was introduced to MetPro in November of 2018. And I, my marathons had been rough for maybe about two or three years. In fact, I had taken a whole year off from doing races just to try to get healthy and rebalance and everything. And I tried a lot of things to lose the weight on my own and pretty much just ran into a brick wall every single time. And so when the opportunity to work with the Met Pro came up, with the coach came up, I just thought, you know, this is not going to work. I'm extremely skeptical, <laughs> but I'm desperate. So I will try it. I will give it my best effort. You know, here goes nothing. That was kind of my attitude going into it. Um, and of course I was just blown away with the results that I had. Um, it, you know, definitely exceeded my very, very low expectations. And I was able to lose 20 pounds of fat in the first like, five or six months, wow. which of course just made me feel amazing. Um, you know, from an energy standpoint, my clothes fitting better, having to buy new clothes, my running was a lot more effortless. And I started to notice my marathon times come down as I lost that unneeded fat. And as I got stronger, um, so I was able to finally run a sub four mar hour mar marathon again after about uh, six months on Met Pro, and wow. then was able to qualify for Boston again. And after just over a year um, of doing Met Pro, I ran my fastest marathon at the age of 41. I Holy ran a cow. yeah, I ran a three hour, 19 minute marathon. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just incredible. It was just like, you know, it was one of those things, once you start making progress and you figure out what is working for your body and you're, you're, you know, dialing in your nutrition and your workouts and things like that. It was just like all the pieces were coming together for me. So I am just so grateful for MetPro and, you know, the journey with my coach, because it has really been life-changing for me. Wow, that that is super exciting. You know, I think I think everything you were just saying, the thing that resonated with me the most is that you're fastest at age 41. So many women think, you know, oh, I can't if I'm 40, there's no what's the point of exercising anymore? I hear that from people and it's it's like it's not too late to start exercising. I mean, that not that you were starting out, but like, look at the progress that you made. Oh, and that's just yeah. phenomenal. That's so <laughs> that's so inspiring. <laughs> it's definitely reset you know, kind of my framework for what is, you know, is possible after the age of 40. Um, and I, I feel better now I'm, I'll be 44 this year. I feel better now than I did in my twenties and thirties wow. <laughs> from an energy standpoint, from the way my body is performing and, you know, my strength is better. And so, um, I really like to encourage women that, you know, you have to start obviously where you're at and everyone has to start somewhere, but you can still make awesome progress. You can still feel good, look good and reach your goals no matter what age you are. So that's highly encouraging because, you know, MetPro is so individualized and is just right there with you every step of the way. Absolutely. And, and speaking of that, how, how do you work MetPro in with your training schedule? That's a great question. Um, usually my coach and I, we kind of talk about what my upcoming uh, races are going to be looking like in my training. So we kind of have an idea of when we're going to do an up adjust. So, you know, I'll have more food available for those long runs and for the races. And so we strategically do the down adjust or the cuts um, so that it doesn't affect my energy or performance. And, and I think that was one thing that was missing before because I didn't really have that contrast in my diet. And so my body just got used to what it was doing. And it was like, I'm not changing anything. <laughs> I was demanding a lot out of it, but I wasn't fueling it appropriately. I wasn't giving it the nutrition nutrition, um, to be able to perform better and, and also get leaner. So that, and that I'm was sure really that, important. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure that affected your recovery as well. 
Exactly. And, you know, as a person does get to be a master's runner over age 40, you do have to pay a lot more attention to your recovery. Um, it, it's so essential to be giving your body the nutrition that it needs, be getting that rest and, you know, be limiting things like alcohol and sugar and fried foods that don't do us any favors. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, it's really important to put all those pieces together. And it's not like you have to be a hundred percent perfect to make progress on MetPro. I mean, I just returned from a week long vacation in Mexico and I was not perfect. You know, the whole time I was there, um, I put, you know, enjoyed some extras that I don't normally do, but, um, you know, I can still feel good and jump right back in a hundred percent, uh, when I get back. So <laughs> that, that is awesome. I, I love that. And I love hearing that you can, you had fun. You, you could still go on vacation, be in that vacation mindset, but not feel like, you know, you, you did damage or when you got back, you felt kind of, uh, you know, it, <laughs> that's my technical term. Uh. Yes. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> We've all felt it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I feel like the longer that I I personally do MetPro, the more that I, I do feel that way whenever I eat things that are unexpected. Like if I have if I have frozen custard, which is one of my favorite things on the planet, uh, you know, I always I always feel like one, it's not as ex it's not as exciting to me as it used to be somehow. <laughs> exactly. And also, <laughs> and also, I feel like I have this like lead ball in my stomach afterwards. It's just not it's 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 not worth it anymore. <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, let someone else get it and they just have two or three bites because yes. those first three bites are the best anyway. <laughs> so true. Yes. <laughs> and um, uh, I have to say, I am so impressed that you guys have been recording Marathon Training Academy for over 10 years. Congratulations. Thank you. That is, that is an amazing feat. There's very few podcasts that have been around that long uh, before other people were using the word podcast. I know people start podcasts a dime a dozen these days, but back then, sure. that's not the case. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, how has it evolved over the years, though? Wow. Well, when we first started in February of 2010, um, I didn't know what a podcast was. And my husband, Trevor, who had the vision for doing it, had to really talk me into it because he wanted to do a show about marathon training. And at the time, I'd only run two marathons. So I felt like I was very far from being an expert or even having really a handle on it. I was at the time pregnant with our third child. And my husband, Trevor, who wanted to do the podcast, wasn't even a runner. And I was like, <laughs> Um, I feel like there's a disconnect here because I'm not going to be able to do all the talking and, you know, people need to hear from someone who's new to running and that, you know, if, if you're not even a runner, like, how are you going to be adding to this conversation? <laughs> so, what are you so going to do? Exactly. <laughs> So one of my conditions, if we we're going to start this podcast is that he had to start running. And so that was kind of part of the early journey was him starting to run. He started with one minute walking, one minute running intervals and built up, eventually did a half marathon and a full marathon and has continued on from there. So a lot of people really related to his journey of a person who really hated to run um, and kind of learning to love something that he previously hated. And then I was more of like the type A, very, you know, goal oriented driven runner, um, who was always wanting to take on bigger challenges and things like that. So, you know, a lot of listeners related to me as well. And, you know, we've had just some really, really loyal listeners from the beginning. And of course, new listeners all along the way. So um, we're just really thankful for the audience that we have. Oh, that's amazing. I love I love that journey. Uh, you guys remind me a lot of my husband and I. Um, <laughs> Opposites attract, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to make sure our listeners know about your journey or um, about marathons, anything at all? Well, um, you know, if you've ever thought about becoming a long distance runner, about doing a marathon, I mean, it's a wonderful time to start. Don't ever think that you're too old or too out of shape. You know, you just have to go through the process of building up that running base and challenging yourself. You really, you really never know where long distance running is going to take you. I mean, both physically and kind of metaphorically through life. I feel like it opens up a lot of opportunities and experiences for people. It teaches them uh, you know, stuff about themselves. 
Um, it's really good for clearing the mind and everything. So I just always encourage people that no matter how old you are, just get started, um, do your research, of course, so that you do it safely. Um, but, you know, just try to enjoy the journey and don't ever think that you're too old for something because there really are no limits as far as, um, what you're capable of if you really are willing to put in the work and to challenge yourself. So that's, that's what I would encourage people. <laughs> that's, that is so true. Very good advice. Now it is, if people want to reach out to you with questions, where can they find you? The plus, best place to go is marathontrainingacademy.com. That's our website. We've got a contact page on there. So people can shoot us an email if they have questions or comments. Um, we have um, coaching over there. We've got virtual challenges that we do, just a ton of articles and information for people you know, who are wanting to get started. So yeah, marathontrainingacademy.com. And we're on most of the socials at Marathon Academy. Wonderful. Thank you. Andy, I really appreciate your time today. Listeners, that's all for this week. You can find all of the MetPro Method episodes anywhere you get podcasts or metpro.co slash podcast. Please be sure to follow the show and rate and review. That lets other people know what they can expect from the show. You can also learn more about MetPro at metpro.co. Metpro.co.